Hi, welcome to my channel, Decoupage DIY with Jo Marie Domino. If you are a fan of decoupaging on glass, and I absolutely love it, this video is for you. I'm going to take you step by step on three different projects. So if you're a beginner, no worries. Let's get started. I found these awesome glass plates at a garage sale. They're shaped like a scallop seashell, but they're clear. So I thought, why can't I do reverse decoupage, which means I can put the napkin on the back. So I think we're going to be able to see it. And remember, with the napkin on the back, we can put food on the front. All right. So I went over to my friends at Vippy's Designs. They have hundreds and hundreds of beautiful napkins. www.vippy's.com. So I looked at the things that they had, and I love this. It's patriotic bouquet. See how you can see the image right through it. So that would be a really good choice. Then I thought, you know, we're getting to be into summer. I love these, the heart-shaped flags. It's a cute pattern. That would be perfect. Then I thought, well, hey, it's a seashell. What if we put some type of a fishy scene on it? This one is nice. The image goes all the way across and that fits perfectly. I found this other napkin with whales. I love all the colors of the blue. It's so calm and soothing. That would work with this um, beautiful clear plate as well. Then this watercolor one, also because of the seashell, moving it around on this napkin definitely gives it possibilities. Then I found this. I'm like, look, if I can use it for food, why not put a napkin with food on it like this one? It has cupcakes and it has a patriotic theme. Can just move it around until I've got the pattern in the right place. And of course, this napkin's the best of all worlds. It's beachy, it's patriotic because the sandals are red, white, and blue. So here I got my dilemma, but is it really a dilemma? I've got to look through these napkins and decide which one I want to use. So let me show you now. Crafting friends, it was tough between the flip-flops and the cupcakes, but I did decide on the cupcakes. They're really cute, and I could put cupcakes on top. So the first thing I'm going to do is separate that top printed ply because that's what we use when we decoupage. And again, just move it around until you like the position of the napkin under the clear glass plate. Now, before we do anything, we always want to give our glass a good wipe down of alcohol. It makes it squeaky clean because you want to make sure that napkin is going to adhere well. So when I'm done, I'm just going to give it a little time to dry. And just tip Try to remember where you want to place the napkins. We are going to be turning it upside down. All right, now that the back is completely prepped, I'm ready to put on my Mod Podge, and I am using gloss. And as I put it on, I want to be careful. I get it into all those little channels that make it a seashell, and I'm making sure I go all the way to the edge. don't want to put too, too much on, but I want to give it a nice, even coat. All right, that looks pretty good. So now again, because it's reverse decoupage, I'm turning the napkin upside down. And then I'm looking for that one cupcake that I was gonna put there on the bottom to make sure I have the pattern the way I want. And that looks perfect. I'm gonna pat it with my fingers. Now, one of the tips for using this um, to get the napkin down flat with all these channels is to use a sponge. I know a lot of times you see me use saran wrap, but a sponge really helps to get the napkin in all the grooves. All right, I'm gonna let that dry. After I was done, I noticed there was a couple spots I needed to put a little bit of Mod Podge in. No problem, just tamped it down with the sponge. And while that's drying, I decided I'm going to do another plate. And this time when I put the Mod Podge on, I am gonna hold the plate up a little bit higher off the table just to make sure I do get the Mod Podge into all of the grooves and right up to the edge. And what napkin did I choose? Mm, drum roll, I decided on the fishy one. I'm gonna do the same thing. The only difference is this sponge is slightly damp. When the sponge is slightly damp, it really helps get that napkin into the grooves and well adhered along the edges. All right, so I'm gonna finish doing that. Again, making sure I get those edges. And when I'm done, look how nice that is. I'm gonna put it off to dry. That damp sponge really works. Okay. I'm back to my cupcake plate and it's all dry. So now I want to remove the edge and that's my finger sander. And then I also have a nail file and I'm going to show you the difference. Now I started using the finger sander and that was fine. 
The only thing is this glass plate has the scallop edge and it really didn't do a good job. So I'm using a fingernail file, which I think is still better to use than say a scissor. If you get a clear plate that doesn't have the scallop, like, um, like this one does, it's very decorative. You can go ahead and use the finger sandal instead because it does do a really quick job. But listen, you know, it took me a little bit more work, but I thought with the shape of this dish being a seashell, it was definitely worth it. Look how pretty that is. I love how this is coming out. Back looks great. All right, now I'm gonna show you. I have both plates done. There's my cupcake plate, came out so pretty. And my fish dish, oh, I love it. I love the position. Now, I wanna put white paint on the back. Um, it's gonna make the colors in the napkin pop. But before I do that, I wanna hold it up. Look at how you can see the cupcakes, the whites. The white paint underneath really brings the colors up. I don't want the white paint seeping through the napkin. So I'm gonna put a sealant on first. I'm going to use Dora Clear, and I am using the gloss, okay? That's what's in my little container. And I'm gonna put a nice thin coat on top of the napkin. This is gonna give me a barrier before I put the white paint on because if white paint seeps through the napkin, it just looks all blotchy from the front. So this is a good little step and a good tip to do before you put the paint on the back. And I'm gonna do it to my cupcake plate and I'm going to also do it to my fish dish. Then I'm going to let them dry. Oh, and here's a sneak peek of another glass project I have coming up. It's also reverse decoupage. Look how glittery that is. Okay, we're gonna let that dry. Now that it is dry, I'm ready to put on my white chalk paint. That's what I'm having the container. It's Rust-Oleum white chalky paint. That's my favorite. I'm using my sponge pouncer and I'm gonna go over the back of the plates. That's right on top of the napkin. And I want to turn it over so you can see the difference when you put the white chalk paint on how the colors just pop. You can see that frosting so much better and the colors also the red and the blue when you put the white chalk behind it. All right, and I'm going to continue to finish painting the back of the plate. I believe it's only going to need one coat, but see how I'm making sure that the paint goes into all of those grooves. All right, I'm gonna finish it off and then I'm gonna let it dry. It's coming out so good, I love it. And now I'm going to do the same thing to my fish dish with the white paint because it really helps the colors if the fish, those pink fish to pop. But I just want to tell you, you don't have to paint the back. It really is an option. If you like the translucent look, that's fine. Just skip doing the paint. All right, I finished doing the fish dish also. So now I want to add a little extra touch and that is to do the edge of the plate, especially because it's this beautiful scallop. So on my fish dish, I used this metallic bluish green paint along the edge and it came out really nice. Now for the cupcake one, I decided to use another one of my favorite products, which is the Rub and Buff, and this color is in silver. Now Rub and Buff is a solvent, which means it's going to you know, be very difficult to take off of your fingers. So I'm using a little sponge applicator and I love how that looks. All right, both plates are done and they're dry. Love the scallop edge, but now I want to put something on the back to protect it. And it's a beautiful day outside, so I'm going to spray it with my Rust-Oleum Triple Thick Glaze. You want to do that outside. It does have a high odor and I'm going to do three coats and let each coat dry before doing the next. Now, I wanna give you a little care instruction on these. You should only do a hand washing, even with the Rust-Oleum triple thick on the black. Don't put them in the dishwasher and definitely do not put them in the microwave. Look at all those beautiful napkins, but I was able to pick two that I really love, my fish dish and my cupcake plate. Oh, I love them, they're so cute. Here's a cute little clear glass bowl and I have a pile of extra napkin pieces from my fish dish. So I decided I'm going to do reverse decoupage on the little bowl as well. So I cut off some of the little pieces from the napkin. Well, I actually did a nice little tear. I'm gonna put it on the bottom and I'm gonna go around the edge and they're gonna fit really nicely. I'm going to use Extreme Glitter Mod Podge. It's just Mod Podge, and it's got the glitter right inside the glue. So I'm just gonna roll it around a little to make sure the glitter is mixed in there well. 
And I'm going to use this just like I would use other Mod Pods. The only difference is this is also going to give it some glittery um, shine as well. So it's the same thing. You could use regular Mod Pods if you don't want to use the glitter. So again, it's reverse decoupage. So I'm going to turn the little piece of napkin upside down. And my brush already has some of the Mod Podge on it. So I'm just going to go over the napkin. Let me turn it over so you can see. I know it looks very white right now, but once the glue dries, it's just going to look sparkly. So I did cut some other little pieces off the napkin. And because this is upside down and these are fish, I want to remember to put the fish upside down as well. Okay, so when you turn it over, the fish are going to be swimming right side up. And I cut other little pieces of the napkin off as well, just to give it a little more interest. Um, I did a little bit of coral and I did some seaweed. And what I'm going to do is go all the way around the bowl, putting the little pieces of napkin on the same way. And then I'm just going to give it some time to dry. Okay, my little bowl is all dry and you can kind of see some of the glitter, but I am going to go ahead and put white chalk paint on the back of the little bowl as well. And I'm using my same white paint, which is the Rust-Oleum Chalky Paint. There you can see a little bit more of the glitter there. And I am applying it with my sponge pouncer and I'm going to go all the way around the bowl and I'm only going to need one coat look how nice that is i can't wait to see it once the glue and the oh, paint dries it's just so pretty all right i'm going to turn that over and i'm going to give that some time to dry okay my little bowl is now dry it's so pretty i love how sparkly it is I used the Mod Podge Extreme Glitter. That's what I used to adhere the little pieces of napkin. But then I went ahead and gave it a couple coats on the back so it's so glittery. All right, I went ahead and did one for my cupcake napkin as well because I had scraps left over. I'm going to do something a little bit different on this one. I took off little strawberries off the napkin that I used. And I'm actually going to take these little strawberries and I'm going to put them on the outside of the bowl. Now remember, because there's paint there, when you turn the bowl over and you look on the inside, you're not going to see those because the paint separates it. So you're doing two different kinds of decoupage. You're doing reverse decoupage and then you're doing just, I guess, regular decoupage. And anytime you do reverse decoupage, this is definitely an option for you. And I love how this is coming out. It's making it a little bit more fancy. Okay, I'm going to let that dry. And once dry, I decided to go in and add some more shine and glitter. So I'm using opalescent glitter glue, and I'm going to put that on top of all of the strawberries. And then I'm going to take red glitter glue, and I'm going to put some little red dots on it. Now remember to always test your glitter glue so it doesn't come out in one big glob. And again, I'm just going to do little dots all the way around the little strawberries. I want to give my little bowls a finishing touch like I did with the plates. So I went ahead and did the rim of the bowl in a blue-green metallic. But instead of using the rub and buff, I'm going to use regular acrylic paint, red paint, and a little sponge pouncer. Now, sponge pouncers, they come in a set in different sizes. So I thought the small one really works. And I'm just tapping around the rim of the little bowl. And I'm loving the red with the strawberries and the white on the back. The red really looks good. All right, once that's dry, I want to seal them just like I did the plates. And I'm going to use the same stuff, which is the Dora Clear Gloss Varnish. Okay, I have to correct myself. I actually use spray on the plates, but on the bowls, I am going to use the Dora Clear. And I'm going to put on a couple of coats. And Dora Clear is thin, so I could do nice thin layers. And you can really see the sparkle because the door clear is gloss. My bowls are done and I used the napkin that I had left over from when I did my fish dish. I also had extra napkin left over from my cupcake plate and I did a reverse decoupage and I decoupaged on the outside of that and they came out so cute. Now I just want to tell you that I got these little bowls from the Dollar Tree. They are four in a pack, so make sure you grab a few of them. This is just a glass jar I took out of my recycle bin. Wait till you see what I do with this. You're going to save all of your jars. All right, this is my rice basket. There's a bag of rice in there, and I can position the jar exactly where I want, and it's not going to roll onto the floor. 
This is gloss Mod Podge, and I'm just gonna take it and I'm gonna squirt it onto the jar. Once I got the Mod Podge on there, now here's a real technical application, okay? I'm just going to swirl the glue with my fingers. You know, this is so much fun. I almost feel like a little kid when I'm doing this. I'm just gonna keep swirling it on. It doesn't have to be anything exact. Now, before it dries, I've got some dried pressed flowers here, and I'm going to put them on top of the glue. Now, I have a theme going on here. I don't know if you can tell, but I've got flowers in red, white, and blue. So they actually came with this little tweezer that's perfect, and I'm just taking the flowers and I'm placing them on top of the glue. Nothing fancy or special. This isn't hard to do. You really can't make a mistake. I also have some of these little flowers. They're actually paper flowers. I have them in white and blue, and I had to take some of the white ones and paint them red so I can do red, white, and blue. So again, I'm just randomly placing it on them. And once I have as many as I like, that looks good. I'm gonna let it dry. All right, the one section is dry. I wanna hold it up so that you can see all of that gloss you know before i'm done it's going to be even more shiny now i'm going to turn the light out here because i think you're going to be able to see it a little bit better i'm going to carefully roll it because i haven't put a sealant on top yet and they are still fragile and i'm going to go ahead and do some more of my technical application by putting some mod podge gloss onto the jar and i'm just going to swirl it with my fingers again nothing precise and once i have enough on i'm just going to go ahead and repeat the same thing I did. I'm using red, white, and blue flowers. These are all pressed dried flowers. And I actually got them from Amazon. I'll put the link below and they come in all different colors. I just picked out the red, white, and blue flowers. And I'm gonna do the same thing with my little paper flowers. I'm just gonna kind of fill in with them. And as I do it, I just kind of check it to make sure I have enough. And once I do, and that's looking very good, Maybe one more. Yeah, that's good. All right, we're going to let that dry. Okay, one section left, and this is Gloss Mod Podge. You know, this is so relaxing. I love doing the swirled Mod Podge technique. As a matter of fact, I have a couple other videos where I use a similar technique. You might want to check them out. I'll put the links down below. All right, so I'm just filling in now with some of the blue, some of the more paper flowers, and I have some in red and some in white until I have enough and let me show it to you and I'm going to spin it all the way around so that you can see how pretty that is. All right, it's all dry and it looks nice and glossy. Okay, but wait till you see what I'm going to put on top now. I am using Mod Podge Super Gloss Glue. This is so pretty. It is thicker than the other varieties. I want you to see you see that it's thicker than their other glues, but that's okay because it's really glossy. Now, because it's so thick, um, you have to be a little bit more careful when you put it on there. Because remember, these are dried flowers. So what I'm doing is kind of a brush and a tap, okay? Because I want to make sure that the flowers don't break. But you know what? By doing this, I'm actually giving it extra texture. Now, you saw me swirl the glue, but by tapping like this also, it's really giving a lot of texture. And wait till you see how it looks once it's all dry. It's definitely worth doing this. It's definitely worth doing the extra coat on top. That's really, really pretty. All right, let's go ahead now and let that dry. I want to make this into a lantern. And because of that, look how pretty that is. Um, I'm going to give it a handle. And this is just regular rope. But I am going to use E6000. It's an industrial strength glue because I want it to be able to hang. And I don't want the jar, of course, to drop and break. So I'm going to put a little bit on two different sides. But I'm also going to use some hot glue. The hot glue is for like your instant adhesion. And then in about 48 hours or so, the E6000 will cure and it will be fine to hang up. So I'm going to do the one side and again with the hot glue. And there's the rest of my handle and I'm going to press down on that. All right, I'm going to show you just a little bit. You definitely don't want to be hanging on anything until the 48 hours is done. Now, I want to also do a little bit more decorative rope around the rim. So I'm going to be using my E6000 again, and I'm going to put that directly onto the glass. And then I'm going to go ahead 
and use my hot glue as well. Now, when I'm doing this for extra strength, I'm actually going to put the rope over the handle okay with the extra rope over the handle it's just going to make it stronger because i don't want the jar um, to drop so i'm going to do this all the way around i'm just doing a little bit of the e6000 and the hot glue e6000 just to remind you is like an industrial strength glue and i also want to say you don't really want to get this on your fingers because it's hard to get off. So you want to be careful as you do it. And this is nice. It's giving it extra strength, but this little bit of rope is also making it more decorative. All right, let's let that cure. Wait till you see how pretty this is once I hang it in my yard. And here's a look at my jar that I made for the 4th of July or any time, or if maybe you just like patriotic decor. I hung it out there in my garden and you can put fairy lights in it. That's what I did here. Or even uh, maybe a battery operated candle. This is a close up so you can see I put things inside, some straws, a little pinwheel and a flag to make it more decorative. All right. This was so much fun with the cupcake and the glass plate. I got it at a garage sale and I transformed it using the reverse decoupage method. And look, because everything was put underneath the glass, I could go ahead and put cupcakes on the top because none of the food is touching any of the Mod Podge. And since I couldn't decide on a napkin, I decided to use this other really adorable one with all the fishes on it. I call this my fish dish and I used the same clear glass dish as I did with the cupcake holder. I did reverse decoupage and you know I had scraps of that napkin left over so I got some bowls from the Dollar Tree and I did reverse decoupage on them and because the decoupaging is all underneath I'm able to add my little fish crackers and I also have some candy and I'm able to add some candy right inside as well. All of my beautiful napkins, they come from Vippy's Designs, www.vippies.com. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can see more DIYs, decoupage DIY with Jo Marie Domino. And remember, you can follow me and join me on my Facebook and my Instagram.